it's called. I'm talking about the Ritz Crackers. Yeah, but fuck the Ritz Crackers. Let's just go to the Ritz Carlton. I'm sick of this place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. When the hell are we going on a vacation? What new baby? Spencer? Baby. Elaine's baby? July before. I want to, to go. I want to go. New York? Well, that's where they live. We bringing it back to New York? Well, I don't mean, know where it is. I don't really like What up, know. y'all? It's your dude, Tank Lip, a.k.a. Jason Lip, a.k.a. L.I. The Prophet. That's Large Intelligence, The Prophet. A.K.A. The Last Great B. Buzzin. A.K.A. The Last of the Great Jedi. So, I guess it's like a Jedi mind trick or some glitch in the Matrix. I died, yet I'm still here. I guess I came back from the dead. A glitch in the matrix. But now, I'm Jesus 2022. The return of the Messiah. Come on, here. Your breakfast is ready. Alright, so if my breakfast is ready, can I have it, please? You know you're on the video, right? You might as well show your face. No, thank you. You made a post the other day on Facebook that I died. I did not. Yes, you did. What? Yeah, who else was writing that? Not me. No, you said Tank Lip died. This is his mom speaking. Oh, for crying out loud. ridiculous. That wasn't you? No. Come on. Well, who was on my Facebook saying Tank Lip died? <laughs> saying they were my mom? Who do you think the idiot was? I don't know. Here, here's your food. Come on. Sit down at the table. You want to get in this video? We no. might actually finally go viral no, if I could no. just get your ass I'm in this video. Come on, Jason, please. You said you're ready. Come on, not over there. Over no, there. No, 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 no. I'm on the video over here, please. You're make a mess for me. I want to eat over here. This is where my video is set up. Thank you. Why don't you just get in the damn video already? We'll get famous. Tank Lip and his mom. Mom, you would be fantastic. They would love you. They would get such a kick out of you. Your your uh, your TV material, and you just don't realize it. We'd have the best reality TV show. Marcus always said that that we should have our own show. Yeah, well, he talks big like he want to do a TV show, but he never want to actually get on the camera. Put the plate under that. Please. So it's always left up Jason, to me. Well, all these people think I died. What are they gonna think now? Jason. Did I? I think I did die and I came oh, back. Jason. What up, real bars? You know, you know, you do tank lip got the bars, bro. What's happening, bro? I'm on my chicken noodle soup for the soul right now, cause I'm Jesus 2022 with the crackers, cause I'm a cracker. Ha! Look at my shoulder, bro. Look at my, my bicep and my shoulder. Like, I'm getting big. I'm not even working out. I don't even lift weights anymore. That's on some Jesus 2022 shit. But if you look at my stomach, I'm fat as shit in my stomach. But my arms look damn good. I got the tan going on. I guess when Jesus makes his return, he come with that fresh tan, though. Ha!
Mom, all these people gave their condolences that I died, and they were pay, they were paying their respects. And I'm still here. Did I die or? I didn't die. What if I did it? Then I'm really disturbed. If I pretended that I was you, saying Tank Lib died, maybe I died and I came back from the afterlife. That's very disturbing that I did that if I did that. Yeah. I'm blacking out. I don't remember. No, you can do that. Someone hacked my page? No, it's on my page. I don't know. The only way for it to be done from my page is for someone to do it from my page. So either I got hacked or I'm a very disturbed individual that I would fake my own death. I'm thinking the latter, that I'm just a very disturbed individual that faked his own death. That's very disturbing to be I'm, I'm, I'm hardly aware. so fascinated with death that I would want to see what it would be like if I was gone. I tell you what, it would have been one pathetic funeral. No, seriously, talk to me for a second. No, I, I, I don't want to do it. The turnout for this thing, this turnout for this thing was pathetic. Like, if that was my funeral, that would have been a very pathetic funeral. I don't think people give a shit whether I'm here or I'm not here, honestly. But worse than that, I don't know if I give a shit if I'm here or not. Because, like, when life reaches a certain point, like, when I was younger, I was fascinated with, I wonder what it'd be like to kind of, like, see what it would be like if I wasn't here. Like, who would miss me? Like, what kind of respect would I get? Would it be crickets? No one pays attention to it, whether I'm here or not there. And then I reached a point where it was no longer kind of like a weird fascination with what it would be like and how would people react to if I was gone. And it like transcended and transitioned into like almost not caring. Like forget about how people would react if I wasn't here, but it's a little different than that. It's similar, but it's a little different. It's kind of like the, in a way the opposite, but in a way the same. Not like me personally, almost not caring if I'm here or I'm not here. Like life gets so pointless at a certain point. You hit such a dead end road and it's beyond depression and it's beyond darkness. And I guess you could call it a black hole, but it's probably better explained with some more explanations attached to like, what is the black hole like? Um, but you start to like, it almost is like the gift and the curse. Like each day you wake up is a gift, right? Your, your, your head's above water. But when you start to wake up and you're like, you almost dread it. And it becomes like a curse when you wake up because it's a continuation of just like this dead end road uh, and it's more misery than it is pleasure you start to almost not care if you're here or you're not there. You're here, if you're here or you're not here, which is a little different than like wondering what people, how people would react to your life if you're here or you're not here. And part of that is the gray area in between when your existence alive is almost like you're here, but you're not here. You're so alone and so alienated and so isolated that even though you are here, it's like you're not here. That's what contributes to a lot of my misery is just feeling like a real lost boy. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's some real severe mental illness, but it's not just mental illness of the chemistry in my brain. It's definitely a lot circumstantial at this point. It's like 
where my placement in the world has become and the disconnection. Like, I'm so connected to something because I learn such deep things like every day, like these new deep epiphanies come to me and I just get wiser and wiser. So I'm very much connected in the disconnection, which does speak to the distractions of people, like being in pe with people is a distraction to evolving as yourself, but that's deep too. Because the realm gets so heavy and deep, the heaviness of, of how deep that black hole is is too much for one person to handle. In a way, it's better to revert back to the distractions and be surrounded by people. So you got to go in and out of the matrix, all these glitches to like balance, like there has there's like a balance of being connected and disconnected. being attached and disattached because of needing the distractions and not needing the distractions. You don't need the distractions because to get the best growth is actually probably done learning it yourself instead of like people making you like their puppets and then you're learning what they want you to learn. You need to learn what you want to learn but then when you learn that, you're like, oh my God, like this is fucking amazing. Like, let me share it. But then you've been, you're so disconnected so long when you try to plug in, you just can't plug it in. You just can't get connected. And then you, you long for the distractions of being surrounded by people. The distractions that are because you're surrounded by so much people, you get distracted, you start to long for that again. But back to a major point of this is like I do vaguely remember a fascination at certain points of my life, wonder being sort of fascinated with like having a bird's eye view on my death, like seeing what it would be like after I died and how people reacted to my life and my death and like, would they care that I'm not here or, or here? Would they miss me? Would it seem like they loved me so much or would they just not care at all? Or would it just go like unheard? Like you're so lost in the rabbit hole no one even knows that you die. You're so disconnected. No one even knows at the point when you die. Like what would it be like? Or would it be like the buzz heard, heard around the world? Like, oh my God, Tank Lip died. And like, you know, the telephone game. And before you know it, everyone's like just talking about like, oh my God, Tank Lip died. And there was a fascination with that. So I've always been fascinated with kind of faking my death. Just to see what it w is going to look like when I do actually die. But then, like, it's different than that. Me, personally, like, that's talk or hypothesis about how people, other people outside of me, other people are going to react to my death. Then there's my reaction to my death. I have reached a point of living, a living existence, that has felt so much like a death and being buried alive that I have reached a point where me myself almost sometimes don't care if I'm here or I'm not here. Like I could take it or leave it. If I die, I die. Like, cause I almost want to kill myself anyway. So when it happens it ha and in a way that's a gift, cause then you're not as scared of stuff, you know, a lot of scare and being scared and Fear and stuff in life is almost because you care too much about not dying. So that in itself is like a semi gift to not care as much because then it alleviates the anxiety. And I battle with anxiety disorder too, amongst other mental illnesses. So that has actually given me some peace in my anxiety. I am not as nervous and not as scared and not as anxious. 
you can see if you look back at years ago my videos and you see me now i'm way more calm and tranquil i mean i'm cool calm and collected now and that's dope i like that aspect of me now but you know not caring has a catch-22 also to it. There's a con to that pro. As I just point out, there's a gift. Like, you don't have as much fear. But then you also just don't, like, care if you're even here anymore. Which is like being, having, like, a suicidal ten tendency, you know? That's like dark depression. That's dark depression for you. That's one way to explain dark depression, what it's like. Like, I just don't care. Because being here is almost like I'm not here. So, for all of y'all that are going to turn around and point this as like some tank lip shenanigans. He played too much. Tank lip played too much. He go too far. He, he clowning around too much. There is actually a deep point to this stunt. What do I do with it, the stunt? And what do y'all do with it? Maybe I'm crying for help. Am I crying for help? Usually the person that's crying for help doesn't actually tell you after the fact that he was crying for help. That's for the other people to point out. I, let's look deep into this. He's actually crying out for help. He's so miserable. It. He wants some attention. He's crying out for our help to get our attention. You know, there's that. But the person that's crying out for help isn't usually the one to point it out to everyone after. So I'm a little different, but we know I'm different. So I'm pointing it out. I must possibly also be crying out for help like... I can't take too much more of this lonely island. Like, be more involved with me. Am I that unlikable? I think I have a little bit of personality and I'm funny. I'm not stupid. I might not be the smartest guy in the world because if you say that, that's just really stupid because there's always someone smarter than you. But, I mean, I'm not a total lame brain. I mean, I have intelligent things to say, so... Do I turn people off? Like, is it so intelligent and so deep that it's hard for people to want to handle that because they don't, don't know how to conversate on deep subjects? I don't think that's the case because I think a lot of y'all are brilliant. I think people are... In 2022, there's been so much information put in the world and so many ways to access information. I think there's probably more smart people than stupid people. I think a lot of people woke up. And I'm not saying the woke, because I think that's stupid, but I do think people are way more conscious about things and aspects of the world than they used to be. I think it's a definitely more intelligent population. Oddly enough, we're going backwards into like some old types of sl different forms of slavery going on, so... It's interesting how smart we get. We do get stupid in a way. But it's a trap. I've always said it's a trap. And I don't think that's like a paranoid schizophrenic saying, oh my God, life's a trap. It really is a trap. Um, I gotta smoke a cigarette. I'll be back. Another trap. Cash 22s. But like I said, I'll... You know, I, I know cigarettes are going to kill me and give me cancer if, they, if I don't already have cancer. But I'm miserable, so why not smoke?
What's up, y'all? I didn't fake it for clout, dude. Brandon Phillips, much love to you, first of all. India Freeman, much love to y'all for tuning in. That was a statement from the guy, June, said, I faked death for clout. Like, I'm actually really suffering from, like, severe depression and darkness in my life. I know, like, you might look at my life. I don't know how much attention you pay to me. Um, and you could say or not say, like, your life's great. What the hell you, you sit down about? But I'm telling you straight up, I, I'm very disconnected from the world right now. And that's not something I aspire to be. Like, in a sense, at a point in my life... I didn't want the distractions and I separated myself from the distractions because I wanted to grow as a person, but then it evolved into being so disconnected. I don't know if I rubbed so many people the wrong way in my personal life, other parts of my life, but I became very alone and I'm a people person and like it's biological at a per certain point of that. Like as a human, as a person, people live and breathe off other people's energy. And when you're so isolated and alienated, you lose, like a piece of me does die every day. The more and more alone I am, I get in a black hole and I'm so dark right now, dude. I'm so depressed and I have mental illness to begin with, but this is like a circumstantial depression that I'm talking on at this moment based on being so disconnected from people that, like, as I, if you tune in to earlier parts of this video, when you get a chance, you'll see I'm saying there's a fascination I had at a certain point in my life with wondering what it would be like for people, other people, if I died. But it has transitioned for me into me personally not caring if I'm alive or dead. That's different than wondering how people are going to react. Like I personally hate my life so much. And I don't actually hate myself. I actually love myself. That's the part I find curious is I think I'm a pretty awesome dude. I have a lot of love in my heart. If for people that have interacted with me briefly or known me for long times, people will tell you he got a big heart. He's got a lot of love. So that's a likable thing. I'm a loving guy. I'm not a, a, a person that acts with malice to hurt people. I, I really don't. Um, and I've maintained that even through the battle rap community, which is something like feisty, you know, when you're at war with people. I still maintain like loving vibes for everyone, you know, so that there's even through that, I maintain my heart, you know. Um, I have, I think, a lot of good qualities as a person other than that. I think I have a good personality I was speaking on. I think I don't think I'm the smartest dude in the world, but I, I definitely don't think I'm dumb. I can have an intelligent conversation. I don't think I'm the ugliest dude in the world. I don't think I'm the best looking dude in the world. I mean, I just think I'm like a person that people would want to be friends with. And at a point in my life, I had a lot, a lot of friends, you know, and I really felt like I was part of the party and that has been a loss. And when you experience loss, you experience pain, you experience trauma. And that has brought me to a dark place because I want to have friends. I've had friends. I know what it's like to have friends. Now I feel all alone like I have no friends. And that's a place that makes you like not even want to be. You don't want to be in that place. I don't want to really be alive in this type of reality I'm going through. I want to be connected. I want to be with people. I want to have friends. I'm not sure how much I contributed to not having friends anymore. I think I did a big part of it at some point because I separated myself from people. I made a choice. But then I also reached back out and told people, well, why is no one hanging out with me no more? And, you know, people kept putting it on me. I'm like, no, you can't put it on me when I'm saying I want to hang out with you. So, um... I didn't fake my death for clout. Like, I'm really 
upset and in pain and depressed and in a dark place. You know. Yeah. I honestly don't know how I got here, but I seen a post from your mom saying you died in your sleep. My best friend. See more. I'm trying to see more of what he said. You, yo, you really faked a death for clown. Jamal Mally G. Evans, Cliff Watkins. What's up, y'all? I want to read more of what Brandon just wrote here. I honestly don't know how I got here, but I seen a post from your mom saying you... I still don't know how I got here. But I seen a post from your mom saying you died in your sleep, my best friend. I want to read more of what he wrote there. Brandon, I can't read all of what you wrote there, but I'll have to get to it someday. It's telling me um, that there's more to read, but I can't open it. Mental health is real, and you need to get that checked out because it's serious, and I feel like you truly got pain. I do. I do, Brandon, and I do see a psychiatrist. In fact, I'm talking to my psychiatrist on this thing called telehealth today, which one, that's one of the problems. Before COVID, I could go into his office and like talk in person. And at least I got the energy of being in person with someone, even if I had to pay for that company, that that energy, you know, and there's something to be said about in-person therapy and talking to your doctor on a FaceTime, on a video. It's not the same. And I think his energy actually, he's a healer. And I think his energy healed me a lot and kept me more well. And I'm declining partially because of, like, my life was alienated and isolated before COVID. But COVID was just the icing on the cake. I mean, what people going through with the, the isolation with COVID, maybe it's getting better now. That's, like, been my life for many, many years. The people are just experiencing experiencing what it's like to be tank lip and all alone but like it's nothing new under the sun for me this is like a typical day covid no covid i'm i'm alone but you know so people are tasting what it is like to have that aspect of suffering with mental illness and the things that cause mental illness but you know it is the icing on the cake because now it's like people really want to stay away, you know? It's like maybe I was reaching the end of the road of that. I was going to get back into being connected to people and then everyone's on this disconnection, isolation tip, like consciously, consciously making choices to keep a distance. I mean, they even had the fucking social distancing. <laughs> it's an ironic term because that's what my life felt like I was going through something called social distancing before COVID. Um, that was whack though. And I hope you get the help and friendship you need, but if you're doing that kind of shit in real life, what Brandon, what was whack? Like faking my death was whack or something I just said was whack. I don't want to just talk. I want to listen to what you have to say too, and then talk on it. Honestly, I'm very much about listening because that's how you really learn from somebody. I'm not just about hearing myself talk. I'm really not. But I don't, I keep making it where I can't see the rest of what you wrote. It says see more of what you wrote. So I'm going to have to definitely go back into this, Brandon. I really appreciate your input, dude. And I know you're trying to help me. And like I am too, dude, because I wouldn't wish this on anyone, dude. I really, faking the death was whack. Okay, yeah, I could see, definitely, I knew there was a risk to doing this that people could definitely easily quick and quickly turn around and say that was whack. I hate how the live comments are so delayed. I'm sorry, Brandon, I do too. And I, this is nice talking to someone. This is what I like, dude. I'm glad I'm getting to talk to someone. Not just that you're helping me, but just, you know, two people talking. This is a connection. This is an answer to the disconnection. Uh, oddly enough, you're speaking on it being a delayed. So once again, even being connected has a disconnection. That's the internet for you, bro. What's up? What you do? 
You doing good? Whoops. What's popping in your life, man? Right now, I got some chicken noodle soup popping. <laughs> well, man, you know, I appreciate you tuning in. I do. And like I said, it's been real dark for me. And you know, I'm all right, G. Life is stressful, but I'm on this side of the ground to kick its ass. Okay, nice. Fucking kick the shit out of it then. <laughs> you know, do what you got to do. I hear about the stress, man. It's stressful just being at rest. Even being at rest is stressful because then you're stressed like, why am I not doing more, you know? Doing too much is stressful. I mean, dude, for me, taking a shit is stressful. I, I, find, I find myself tense when I'm taking a shit. I find going to sleep, which should be rest, literally rest and peace. I find getting a good night's sleep stressful, but I do it, bro. I try to take strides toward health, the healthy things. I make sacrifices. I know I can literally toss and turn in my sleep for like three hours, two, three hours till I finally go to sleep. And even when I finally go to sleep, it almost by the time I'm done sleeping, I'm like, did I even really sleep? You know, it's like, how much rest was I really getting? Like I might have a nightmare like I was working in my sleep, like on some really toxic nightmares, you know, like it could be like that or it could feel like I'm. Um, too consciously awake during my sleep. So like maybe my eyes are opening like in my sleep and I'm alert to the fact that I'm up like 50 times in the middle of my sleep. So by the time I wake up, I'm like, how much did I actually sleep? Cause I remember opening my eyes 50 times like that kind of work. And it shouldn't be so much work to get a good night's sleep. And I know if I takes me three hours to go to sleep and I want to get seven, eight, nine hours of sleep. And I know that my body's going to wake up no matter what at two, three AM, four AM, if I'm lucky in the morning. So what time do I have to go to sleep to get that eight hours of sleep? I have to literally put myself to bed at five, 6 PM, 7 PM, the latest at night because 7 p.m. to midnight is five hours to 3 a.m. is another three. That's the eight hours of sleep. That's if I fall right asleep at 7 p.m. and sleep till 3 a.m. That's my eight hours. But if it takes me three hours to fall asleep, I have to actually give myself an 11 hour window for sleep if I want to get that eight hours. So I do actually have to put myself to bed at five and I do it every day. So I live a very short day. I mean, not really that short cause I'm up since 3 AM. So, but nothing's popping at 3 AM. It's 7 AM. I've already been up for four hours and I did get my eight hours of sleep, but I had to really work for it. I put myself to bed like six o'clock. I tossed and turned for two hours probably fell asleep around eight and woke up around three. I got my sleep, but I had to work. And it's like that every day because I also have a sleep disorder. I have sleep apnea. I have to wear a fucking mask every night, a sleep machine I use and I wear a mask on my fucking nose and mouth area here. I've been doing that for 20 years now. That's torture in itself too. I can't even sleep on my stomach. I have to sleep facing like this laying up with my back on the bed, facing up, and I can't really move much left or right because I don't want to break the mask. So my brain has been trained to like not move much. And when you're too still, that's not like too restless isn't good, but too still feels like someone like tied you in restraints. And that like fucks with my head. I get claustrophobic. So 
What is he praying and saying? I don't know you and I'm no doctor, but don't let social media make you feel like you need friends. Shit's overrated. I know fr friends can be overrated too, bro. I hear that. That's why I separated myself years ago when I had lots of friends. I'm like, these are not really friends. <laughs> That's just bad distractions. 3 a.m., Work out, clean up, learn something new, cause YouTube is free, my guy. Early bird gets the worm. Yeah, gets the worm. Yo, Brandon, you smart, dude. I like that yeah, Brandon Phillips. Y'all need to check him out. Yo, Brandon, you on some intelligent stuff. I feel like we talked years ago. We did, right? Like maybe five years ago, but we had some deep conversations on like a live video you came on and we're saying some smart stuff. I feel like I remember your name and the vibe and the content of what type of stuff you're saying and the angle you're saying is so intelligent. I feel like it's sticking out to me like we've talked before on some stuff like this maybe. I feel like when I'm in crisis, that's when you pop up. That's not the case with that about you. I feel like that. smart enough to see this person's in trouble, which I am. I'm not so dishonest that I can't admit that. I'm a very honest guy. I'm all about honesty and being authentic. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. But you're smart to, to be able to see it. A lot of people would dismiss this as this guy's just looking for clout. I'm not looking for clout. I, I do want more clout in my videos and music because I feel like I put a lot of effort and it would be nice. Hey, simply to make some money doing something that I do spend energy doing, right? How do you, you got to get views to get money and to get views, I guess people got to like you. You got to make some noise, whatever. I don't know. I feel like I'm, it's a very, another realm of a lonely avenue and lonely world. It's just me tank lip on the internet. I don't quite get that because I think I put out some great material. I think even this conversation we're having right now is great material. It's real. It's authentic. I'm just being myself, but being myself, we're having a nice, intelligent conversation that someone could learn from. I have tons of videos of this nature of what we've got going on right here. They just don't pop off. I, maybe I'm not likable. I don't know. Maybe I'm not big enough to get bigger. <laughs> you know, I mean, you have to have a certain level of bigness. I don't know. My music is the same way. I'm myself. I don't talk about shooting people because I'm not a gangster, you know? Maybe a mental gangster or something, you know, a gangster in the sense of just a tough guy that never quits, even though I sometimes want to, but you know, just a regular dude talking about life and the psychological shit I go through in my music. I don't know why I don't get more views. I think I'll have a good voice for rap, like a, literally a good sounding voice for songs. I think intelligent lyrics, good delivery, good cadence. I think there's even something different about me. I don't think like I'm a copycat style, like, oh my God, he's trying to sound like this guy. I think I have like my own kind of lane, my own lane that I have for my style. I don't know why my songs don't get bigger. You know, some do have success. I have a song right now, 58,000 views. I'm impressed for me. That's like, you know, someone big's 5 million views. My 5 million views is 58,000. That's like a big track for me, but I, I do want more, but I'm not doing this for clout, but I do want more clout. That is true. And I do pull stunts to try to break through the barrier and maybe my approach is wrong. I don't know. Let's see. I'm not smart. I just don't live life negatively because you have the opportunity. Honestly, you have to make the best of it. I only been here two years, so that wasn't me. Okay. I can't front my first interaction is that post and this. So I'm iffy on what you're saying. So I'm iffy on what you're saying. But mental health is nothing to play. And with me being the only one here, I'd rather say something positive than be negative. And you really have an issue. What's your YouTube? I'll subscribe. Um, okay, so there's two YouTubes. There's the uh, Tank Lip Topic channel on YouTube, tank lip, and then I think there's a dash topic, and that has like all my professionally released albums, like there's like 12 albums on there, um, 
it's got like 702 subscribers right now. Again, really low, but I would love it if you subscribe to that. I also have the channel Jason Tank Lip. One word, Jason Tank Lip. J-A-S-O-N-T-A-N-K-L-I-P-P. -P. And that's like my personal channel that I put like blogs like this up. Um, I also do pre-release all my album stuff on that channel. But usually when it gets put on the other channel, then I take it down on my personal channel. So there's two channels, Tank Lip Topic and Jason Tank Lip. I appreciate you subscribing, man. That's awesome. Honestly. Look at this shit. I came in mad leaving to subscribe. Maybe you won't. Look at this shit. I came in mad leaving to subscribe. Laugh out loud. Maybe you on to something. Oh, I see what you're saying. That you you were upset with me for pulling a stunt, but now you're subscribing. Nice. So maybe I am on to something. I get it. I'll be back, dude. I gotta go smoke another cigarette. I'm fucking like a cockroach. I just constantly squirming around to smoke cigarettes. I'll be back. Love you, dude. Thanks, man. Nice to meet you.